let's have a look at the best practice, what process we use, and how we manage and track these problems that our team uncovers. Four simple steps. We virtually construct the building, we identify the issues, we resolve the issues, and we build to the design. Surely that's easy. So we see here that we're able to integrate a 3D model a, a, of the structure, the architecture, and then the MEP models, and then find all the problems. Well, it's actually quite complex. Uh, there are strict protocols that must be followed in order to produce a very uh, high quality end product and something that's not going to flag issues that aren't issues and also hide issues that are potentially issues. So we go through a very vigorous process, some protocols that our modelers must follow so that our constructability issues can be defined, really um, flagged, tagged, and bagged. <laughs> um, during the modeling process, they have to follow this um, priority-based system, and it's not a, uh, not a case of one person as, a, as we would a discipline construct the structural model, one the architectural model, and one the MEP model, and bring it in together. We're actually looking at constructing these models as we would in the real world. So we put these pieces together, and we complete it in that sequence. So we shouldn't wait until, this is the essential uh, message behind the story, we shouldn't wait until the complete model is finished before we begin the coordination and constructability re review. Once we have tagged these elements that have got problems with them, we can see this is the example model ready for coordination. It does depend on the timeline. Most projects that we work on, we would like to conduct a full coordination and resolution session whilst modeling for the first time so that we can change things as we go and we would always have an up-to-date and corrected model. However, in a hard bid situation, we might not have the time to resolve all of the issues at the same time as we're modeling. So a hard bid model would probably look like this. We find out all of the issues, adjust the bid accordingly, potentially, um, and use those to our advantage. You can run both the manual and automatic clash detections, but um, we, if, if you run the automatic detection, then you need to have a plan in place for grouping and filtering, uh, the non-issues, the, the inaccurate modeling, the um, non-model conditions and that type of thing that needs to be um, potentially filtered out so that it doesn't take up time and the process for that is essentially very, very, um, it, it's essential to be able to have a, a constructive meeting so you don't spend lots of time wasted on trying to iron out the problems that aren't actually problems. But if you manually uh, apply as design and installation intelligence, you're, you're creating the building model. Um, as you're creating it, you're going through that qualifying process. And when you find an issue, then you can actually qualify whether it's an issue or not. And in the example above, we can see that these issues have been identified through this process. The small red symbols, the markers, you can see if I just hover over each one here and here and here. If you look very closely, you can see many of them. These are all of the constructability markers that we add so that we can understand more about where these issues are. Let's um, take that forward and look at the process that we run through to resolve those issues. Obviously, the first one, as we've looked at, is about identifying where they are, uh, marking them up and managing them so that we can have early identification of these conflicts and constructability concerns. Then we need to communicate them, so we need team meetings, either virtually or on site, and that's what our project managers are um, able to help our clients with. And we're, we're supposed to follow this process so that we can resolve the issues. And one thing that I'm pointing out, um, this guy sitting in the corner obviously didn't follow the process, the guy with the neck, neck brace. Uh, after communicating this information, we're able to assign responsibilities to be able to resolve each line item. And then importantly, it's not just about letting someone resolve it. We actually have to verify the issues after they have been resolved. So in the next meeting, it's important to validate the resolution, make sure that the rest of the team 
understand what has changed just to reduce the issues, uh, the risk of cascading um, issues based on what's believed to be correct. So we need that verification. As a final acceptance, it's a, a way of keeping score, making sure that people are actually carrying out those actions and being able to ensure that it's not going to have a knock-on effect to anybody else. The last step is obviously to take that design to the field, and this is one that is missed uh, a lot of the time. Obviously, we think that it's just a natural process, but one of the things that helps using a building information model is that we can take the 3D coordinate ge geometry, the 3D points from the model, and use that for the layout. 